Piracy paradox is something that we talk about in the knockoff economy, which relates uh, most strongly to fashion, and that's where we first developed the idea. And the, the gist is this, that we normally think about piracy or copying as something that's bad for creative work, and that if uh, people know they're going to be copied, uh, they're less likely to make that creative work in the first place. And that's why we have copyright law. And what we found when we looked at the fashion industry was that the opposite was true. There was no protection for copying, lots of people copied, and yet people were more creative than ever. We normally think of copying as a bad thing for creativity, but what we show in this book is that copying can often be a force for good. We look at industries from fashion, uh, to food, to football, to finance, to fonts. They're not all Fs, but a lot of them are. The paradox is that piracy or copying in fashion actually promotes creativity rather than killing creativity. In all of those industries, copying is usually legal and very common. And what we find is that despite that, they remain very creative. And we try to understand why that's true, when it's true, and what lessons could be drawn from those industries for other industries like music that have suffered greatly from copying. I have a childhood friend who works in the fashion industry in New York in the garment district. And many years ago, I was talking with him just casually about his work, and he had just come back from a trip to Europe where he was uh, kind of comparison shopping, uh, you might say. He was, he was looking around uh, in different stores and coming up with ideas and, and photographing them and bringing them back to his employer. And I thought that was really interesting that he did that and also that that was legal. So I started to look into the issue, and uh, it was an interesting issue. It turned out, as I discovered, that there was no uh, law against doing that, that in fact it's a very common practice. And I also found out that there wasn't that much written about it, that uh, people who studied intellectual property in law schools like this one tended to look at industries that were protected by copyright. So they wrote about music, or they wrote about film, or they wrote about books. But what they didn't do is look at creative industries that copyright law did not cover. So uh, fashion was a great example. There were a few articles, but for the most part, people had left it alone. And so I just got caught up in it, and I found it to be a really, really interesting uh, area. So I wrote a short piece, and then a longer article, and then eventually this book. We picked a few that we thought were the most interesting to us and also to other people. and. Um, you know, that sort of lended themselves to, to the kind of, of study we were doing. So one of the big ones was actually food, cuisine. So recipes cannot be copied, and likewise the dishes you go and you order in a restaurant, if you like that dish, you want to try to recreate it at home, you can do that. And the same thing uh, is true for another chef. If one chef tastes a dish at a restaurant, a competitor's place, thinks that it's great and wants to recreate it, he or she can do the same. So food was a major subject for us. We also looked at football, where plays and formations can be copied and are copied all the time. We looked at financial innovations. We looked at fonts. Fonts is something most of us don't really think about, but there's actually a lot of fonts, a lot of creativity in fonts. And what we found in all of them was that these were very creative areas that the law, for one reason or another, did not apply to or was not effective in. And we tried to draw some, um, you know, some common lessons out of those. One of the best examples of a dispute between two comics over copying is a legendary fight between Joe Rogan and Carlos Mencia uh, that took place here in L.A. What you see in that video, if you watch it, is two comics, and at some point there are other comics as well, get up on the stage, arguing over who's copying whom. And what that gets at is a central issue for comics, which is they want to be original, they want to, they want to be able to get their jokes and routines out there and not be copied. They want to stop others from copying. Um, but they can't really rely on lawsuits to do it because lawsuits are too expensive and it's too easy to take a joke or a routine and just tweak it a little bit so that it's, the words are different and then you haven't really copied it. So they have a whole set of informal, what we call social norms, informal rules about what you can and can't do. And what you see in the Mencia-Rogan fight is uh, the breaking of those rules and the way that they're enforced. There are things that would change about existing IP law, but there's also some things I wouldn't change. One example of something I wouldn't change involves the fashion industry. In fashion, there's a proposal right now before Congress to amend our copyright laws to give a short three-year copyright to fashion designs. Now, Chris and I are opposed to that 
uh, in part because we think it's unnecessary and we also think it's unwise. We think it would create problems. Likewise in music, sampling used to be very common, uh, but now there are court cases holding that only three notes sampled constitutes copyright infringement. And so this, is, uh, this has been um, a trend towards ever stronger copyright enforcement that I think has a lot of negative effects. So if I could change anything, I would make it easier for people to engage in fair use and uh, easier for them to, um, to incorporate other works into their own works as long as they do it in a reasonable way.